Here is the Parterre Est, the East Garden. We see a very nice uh, view of the castle because here we're like east and south. Recently we have redone and uh, restored all the walls, the terrace walls that you see. Uh, later we will not see them because it's going to be taxes in front of them, just the same height, to hide them. Because usually you could see the pierre de taille, which is like the proper stone that is square and you put there. But here the, the, the walls were made not of pierre de taille but of uh, moellon. What we call is uh, random um, uh, stones and uh, you put them a bit randomly uh, and it doesn't look properly perfect. So these uh, walls were uh, due to be covered by uh, vegetation, by uh, uh, taxus mainly. So it's going to be the wall and another wall of taxus covering them and hiding them. Uh, and this parterre est will be uh, organized with a bit more, because usually at the back of a castle, you often have like a perspective with a long view and a, and a big alley with a statue two kilometers away. Uh, the problem is not a problem. The configuration of Dompierre now is that the, villi the village is just behind with the river. So we cannot do that kind of a, uh, perspective and it wasn't like this before and uh, it will not be like this anymore. And anyway, it doesn't exist, so it's impossible. Uh, so we're going to treat it more like a hotel particulier uh, with a big garden, but still hotel particulier. Uh, the garden behind will be a bit closed. So uh, we have already a shape you're going to see on the map. The shape that is like a big rectangle and one vertical long one. This is how the shape is now. We're going to keep exactly the same shape, but we're going to um, outline it with uh, tilleul with uh, teal trees. Uh, I will show you after um, uh, a 3D uh, uh, picture of what we expect. And we have a statue in the end to always like bring your eyes to catch the highs and to take it to one perspective and to the, the pond that did the further to really show that actually the, the, the garden is a, a garden of someone powerful with money because they have money to put statue even far and the garden looks like it's big even if it's not. So uh, it's going to be teal everywhere. The fountain over there will be restored and uh, put with water. And uh, this is the plan for, uh, for, for, for this garden. Uh, what we restored also is um, the chain. The, the chain you see over there, where Dan is actually uh, going on the, on the stairs. You have a little chain on the side. And uh, I found two sphinx statues from the 18th century probably. We put them there and it looks uh, pretty like if it was done for that already. And this is a happy thing about um, uh, doing, uh, going and looking for antiques is sometimes you just find the thing that is perfectly matching. Let's go. So here you have two lines of TL. We want to uh, continue these two lines of TL and the end of the, this path of TL will be the entrance of the forest over there too, with the little stairs to go up. Here is going to be very lovely and romantic to organize a little dinner between the, the trees and put like some bulbs and uh, lamps on top. This can be very romantic. Let's go up to see the view from the other side so we can understand better. So here's the, the eastern facade of the chateau with uh, a first like a stage. Uh, we're going to put probably some um, parterre here with a uh, buxus later. Uh, we didn't think about it yet, but it's for sure going to be one here, one here. And it's going to be also if we do some concerts. Uh, concert, the public will be seated there and this is going to be a natural stage with the castle behind for the people singing they need something behind them for the sun to reflect so this is pretty perfect for a concert situation the scene, the orchestra, the singers and the public down the whole parterre will be with grass I wanted something a bit more English style in a way meaning like everything will be grass, I don't want gravels there and it's really like the moment the nature is back. We keep a couple of lines that is really French organized garden and formal, but we give the impression that we are already in the forest. So it's going to be the trees marking the limits and the grass everywhere with the fountain in the middle.
this is a little chain that looks like I've always been here and this is not so easy actually because you cannot find this in uh, any place to buy it you need to make it because this is not like a classic uh, chain and is a real uh, metal that they forged so it's impossible to buy it just like this in the market so you have to make it and uh, happily they are doing it right now I will uh, show you after but uh, they do like each little uh, circle one by one see they did one little extra we're going to remove and uh, they warm the iron and after they turn it and it's very interesting to see i am so lucky to have people who didn't really know how to do that but they just went on youtube uh, they learn about it and everyone is learning at the same time and to do this it was uh, it was uh, it was okay to, to to do it themselves and i'm very pleased with the results here you see better the shape is going to have. So is TL right and left coming back and coming like this. I feel like I'm on the plane showing the emergency exit, but over there and finishing over there with the statue um, and the bassin, the fountain in the middle. Uh, we had a question also about like the shape, uh, the angle between like this big rectangle and the other one over there we were wondering like the shape we need to give on the angle or we give like a proper angle like tack tack like 90 degrees but it gives the impression that is a bit too narrow for after or we do a little round or a little square uh, adding a little square in the corner like you see on the map now um, to give uh, an impression to have like two different rooms you know even three you have like a square inside of a bigger rectangle and a rectangle over there so I didn't decide yet what, which one I want to do. And there is also this option that I love, is putting a low taxus hedge. Uh, so you're going to have the teal up, the trunk of the teal, and I want a, a little hedge down also. So you can see between the TL and the, and the taxus, you have a space, of course, to see like a meter, a meter or a meter and a half. And you have this taxus on the floor doing all the drawings of the TL, but only on the first part. And I like the idea of this taxus at some point leaving the TL and doing a little, a little shape on the grass, like you see on the map right now. And I find it kind of a classic and I, I like the, the idea that it really creates like two different spaces uh, without completely cutting uh, the perspective. And I like that and I need to see if it's uh, possible to do it and uh, how to do it and simply uh, what is a good proportion for the square, for the little uh, part, uh, the round part. It's kind of a uh, need to work on it yet. The very lovely part that I talked about before is the uh, Cyclamen de Naples. There is like a tapis over there that is growing just as this period. And uh, Dan will tell you all about it because he's very specialized on it. I know that uh, Anthony can talk hours about all the beautiful things in the chateau and the chatelet and the stairs, the kitchen, all of this. But personally, for me, the most precious and the most valuable thing about the whole domain is this place. It's uh, all little flowers of Cyclamen hederifolium. Uh, in English, it's called um, the ivy-leafed Cyclamen. And in French, they use the name Cyclamen of Naples, which actually explains the origin of the plant very well, because it's a Mediterranean plant. Uh, and as you can see over here, it creates a beautiful um, tapestry of uh, flowers, almost reminds me of the spring. Um, it's a plant that is originally from the Mediterranean, but it's very naturalized uh, more north and very often in uh, chateau domains, like here. It's a plant that does well in the condition, but it's, it's funny because it kind of has a, it's almost like it's lost in the seasons because in summer, like now, end of summer, it produces just a flower. And then after, in autumn, it will lose the flowers, it will create the leaves. And then during winter, it leaves uh, the leaves for then in spring to lose them, which is very like reverse order almost. During summer, it's dormant, so you have no leaves. And then at the end of summer, again, it pops up with the little flowers that to me kind of give me already the sensation of spring, which is so nice to have um, in the, at the end of summer when usually everything will go down a bit in nature. And I think this one um, originated with just a couple of bulbs. And this is to me the real value of this. If you want to plant something like this in a garden, 
you need so many bulbs to get this surface or just so much time to wait. Because they, they distribute, they divide quite well, but it just takes time. And the fact that we have this here, I, I, it's hard for me to estimate the age because I don't know how many were there in the beginning, but I can show you. So the plant grows from a tuber like this, which is kind of the bulb. And this one didn't produce flowers, so I think it didn't make the, the season. But it's like this during summer without any plants. Then now it produced the flowers and it looks like this. And as you can see, we can compare. It grows from this to this size and then it creates a lot of these little flowers, which kind of shows that if you want the density of the tapestry that we have there, it takes time because first it has to go from this to this and then it needs to distribute. So I think with the seeds, because it goes quite deep into the forest, actually it's like really spreading, which is from the seeds. But it's just to show that this is almost something you cannot buy because you cannot plant and have this effect within the first five years. And that's why I think this is honestly really one of the most valuable things about the domain. We are here now behind the Miroir d'eau uh, with the chute d'eau and the waterfall and uh, the electric central that's going to be installed before December, I hope. So here the river is arriving here and the um, cutting of uh, the property was done very randomly. Uh, so randomly that the limit of the property was basically here, just here on the, on the, on the border of the Miroir d'eau. So it didn't make sense to have the end of a property so close to a uh, uh, such a part of uh, the castle. So I negotiated with the, the, um, the person we bought because it was different lots when uh, I bought the house. It was uh, agricultural lots that were sold, a lot of money, and I negotiated with one of the agriculture to sell me two hectares. Uh, we did actually a little exchange, but uh, so I could get back uh, two hectares of uh, land very close to the castle that was actually a bit not convenient for him because uh, with his big machines it was too tiny uh, so he was happy to, to sell it to me and I gave him a little wood that was in the other side but the deal is that uh, because I gave a, 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 a little wood that is going to remove all the trees because it's going to be easier for him because the, the, this little wood is in the middle of his culture is a, of the fields so he's going to cut the trees over there in one condition is that I replant those trees here. So I have one hectare to, to replant with baby trees, of course. So this is going to be the, the land that needs to be replanted. I need to think about how to replant it because, of course, I want a replantation that looks like a wood and looks like natural and spontaneous. I don't want to do like alignment of trees. I'm not sure about uh, the shape I want to give so far, but this is the plan. And now the property ends at the corn. You can see the corn culture over there and that's the end of the property. And uh, happily, because we are close to a monument historique, uh, it will never be any construction over there because it's not uh, impossible to build and it's just for agriculture. So I will always have like that um, landscape like this with nature and culture, which is a uh, very, very cute. Here is the parterre sud. Uh, we are on the south of the castle with the miroir d'eau over here and uh, we decided to uh, restore all the little walls that you see around and all these walls when we restored them we they were in a pretty good shape but we had to uh, redo the the top of them to uh, rejoin it and when we did it we discovered that actually the floor was arriving to this stair this one so when we cleaned, we discovered that it actually was one more stairs and the walls were going much deeper. So we decided to put back to the proper original floor. So we removed a lot of uh, dust and mud and uh, soil that was here. And uh, to rebuild, I mean, to restore completely the walls because you cannot just restore the showing part. You also need to restore the lower part. So we rejoined all the little uh, stones and then we removed the, um, the, the floor. We removed the, the soil here and the, the dust and the mud and we did around the walls and after we decided to do it till the miroir d'eau. And when we, on the second part, when we decided to remove it till the miroir d'eau, we discovered that under the soil it was the two fountains uh, that was under covered. So we cleaned them, we restored them completely 
and uh, um, we we put like the water system inside uh, to be effective for next year. So it's like one and one, each side symmetrical. And for the big project of this year for, for the garden was actually the access because we have an access problem in Dampierre because everything was sealed with moat. So it's difficult for the big machines to enter for the future renovations. So everything was going through the beautiful gate that is not here yet and going through the Châtelet. So that was a bit too dangerous for the renovation in the future because we, we don't want to damage the, the new renovation. So we had to find a way uh, to access the castle and the Châtelet for renovation without going through the Châtelet. So we find a way through the big road over there to contourn all the, uh, the park and actually we, through the wood, we organized a little path. This is done and actually we were very happy because I knew it was a big sequoia, one of the huge tree, the biggest tree of the park and uh, now we have the path going down actually we can uh, emphasize the sequoia and we see it even better and so now you have a little path, a little promenade, you can have a walk and you can go and see the beautiful sequoias that you see here. See how tiny I am? You could almost build me a house in there. So incredibly huge. And the very bizarre thing is uh, the type of wood is soft, it's very soft, so it's very fragile. So we're going to protect it for later if uh, the cars are going that way. Hope you enjoy the garden tour and the garden project. Hopefully in a year time I will show you half of it uh, done already. Uh, because I think it's very important to build the inside and the, the buildings but also the outside is really what is like the like a jewelry and like a jewel you need like a nice box around and uh, this is very important to uh, spend time and energy on renovating and give back the the, uh, the environment nicely so hopefully next year we're gonna see uh, new changes. A bientôt!